Mountains in the Bible or spiritually, they stand for constancy. A mountain stays there. They say the Lord is like Mount Zion. He cannot be shaken. Amen. Amen. Constancy to its song about faithfulness, trust, and truth. We know a mountain is always there. Permanence and eternity, the mount of the Lord. We are going to see the psalm, who shall ascend the mount of God. It talks of firmness, motionless. A mountain, whether there's an earthquake or not, it still abides. Stability, fortitude. So you're like Mount Zion. You're like Mount Zion. You're like Mount Kenya with snow on top. No wonder the Kikuyu prayed facing Mount Kenya and say that is the place where God resides or abodes. Even today, people can't understand how the Mount Kenya and Mount Kilimanjaro can have snow and yet they are at the equator. It talks of majesty. When you see Mount Kenya, you see the majesty. You see the majestic work of God. You remember the song, Oh Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, considering the works the hands have made. I see the stars. I see the galaxy. I see the geomorphological uh, acts of God. The majesty, power of God, strength, refuge, protection. God's presence, many people have attributed that God lives in the mountain. Even the Jews would say God lives in Mount Zion. God lives in the mountain, the Mount Sinai, the mountain of God, because God was there and was fire. It's not that they're saying mountains equals God, because you will see God also condemning mountains. Jesus said, he who has faith as a master seed will tell this mountain to be what? Removed and be cast into the sea, and the mountain will obey. Hallelujah. And remember, Zerubbabel will also be told that, O oh, you mountain, who are you to Zerubbabel? He will crush you. Amen. Amen. And remember, Zerubbabel came with the exiles and they were building the temple of God. And mountain, when you talk of a mountain figuratively, it could be, I have a mountain of work, a mountain of duties to do. It's like an exaggeration. What do you call that in speech? Exaggerated. You are speech people, right? Hyperbole? Hyperbole. Like, okay, you experts in linguists. <laughs> the mountain, when you say like, so and so is a big man, it doesn't mean he's fat. It could mean that, but it also means that they maybe have a status. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. Uh, fullness, blessing, and renewal. The mountain is a place of hope. So, when God tells Abraham, go and sacrifice your son in the mount that I will show you. The mount is Moriah. That mount Moriah, 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. It's the same mount that Solomon, in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, what does it say? Are you there? Please read with me. It helps. It helps your mind. Second Chronicles chapter 3 verse 1. Then Mount Moriah was about 12,072 feet. Then Solomon began what? Build. To build what? The, the house of the Lord at? The in the mount? Where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Orman the Jebusite. This is the same mountain that Abraham went to sacrifice his son. And it's the same Mount Moriah where the temple was built by Solomon. And it's the same mountain where the new, the third temple will be built before Christ comes. And you know that's the same place where there is the Dome of the Rock with the Muslims. Uh, during Ottoman Empire, they came and conquered the Palestine and Muslimized everybody there. And that's where they have to build a temple. It's on Mount Moriah. And on that mount where God says, where Abraham said, in the mount of the Lord, there is a vision. David builds right there 
And God tells him, you cannot build your, my temple. He just built a tabernacle, a tent. Solomon builds the temple. In the mount of the Lord, there is vision. And what happens when Solomon is dedicating the temple? God appears to him and says, Hey, Solomon, what is it that you want? Ask for anything. You have worshipped in the mount of the Lord. Abraham went to worship God on the mountain, that Mount Moriah. And it's the same mountain now Solomon is offering a sacrifice and there's worship and says, in my house, in Mount Moriah, there will be vision. Church, if there's anything that is lacking today in the church, is vision. Because people don't climb the mount of God. I should have started with Mount Ararat. Mount Ararat is where uh, it's about 16,845 feet. This is where Noah's Ark went and landed. And the Mount Ararat represents because it saved the Noah, Noah's Ark. It's a place of salvation, baptism, and cleaning. God cleaned the whole uh, world by water and Noah was left with his children. So Mount Ararat is a place where the ark, and by the way, the ark of the covenant, and of the ark, Noah's ark has been discovered on the same Mount Ararat. Or oh, pieces of that. It's a place of rest. It's a place of newness and rebirth. A mountain, these are things we can learn prophetically about mountains. Mount Ararat is a place where Noah's ark rested. Salvation, baptism, and cleansing, and rest, new birth, and rebirth. Mount Moriah, we have seen Mount Moriah. It's a place where Abraham sacrificed his son, Isaac, and he never killed him. It's a place of faith. Abraham went by faith. When we climb the Mount Moriah, or the mountain of God, we're going by faith. He, it's a place of sacrifice. It's where he offered his son as a sacrifice and God tell him, I don't do human sacrifice. There is a ram caught in the thicket. It's a place of worship. This is the first time in the Bible that we see the word worship. Abraham said, I stay here, you my workers, my servants with your animals, but I and the Lord will go up the mountain and worship the Lord. And after we worship the Lord, we will come back to you. And that time he spoke those words by faith. Because he knew that God would, even though he sacrificed his son, God would raise him again from the dead. It's a place of worship. Today I prayed for people the way they give. That God, in the sacrifices you give, God may bless you and multiply. Amen. Amen. It's a place of obedience, Mount Moriah. Jesus would die almost at the same place. And friends, the same place Isaac was offered is the same place or among those mountains where Jesus, Mount Golgotha or Mount Calvary uh, in Latin and also in Greek. We'll see that in a few minutes. It's a place of obedience. Isaac obeyed his father. Abraham obeyed God. It's a place of obedience. And it's a place of blessing. He says, God tells Abraham, because you have obeyed me, because you have not withheld your son, in this I will do. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Or you can go read it by yourself. It is because you have not withheld your own son. What will I do? Uh, verse number 15. And the angel of the Lord called Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, verse 16, by myself I have done what? Sworn. Sworn. God now is swearing. Before he used to tell Abraham, oh, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. But on this mountain is a mount of covenant. God is now making a covenant. And vowing to himself. It's a place where God vows to accomplish that which he told you. He says, by myself I have sworn, say the Lord. Because thou hast done what? This thing worshipped me. And has not withheld thy son, thine only son. Verse 17. That in a blessing I will do what? Bless I will bless you. 
and in multiplying, I will multiply what? Thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sun upon which the, the sea sh um, upon the seashore and thy seed shall do what? Possess. I like that. Thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemy. Where is this mount? Mount Moriah. When you see the Lord, you get the power and the victory over the demoniac and over satanic and the hell. You possess the gates of the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I will bless you. You shall possess the gate of your enemies. Amen. 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 Verse 18. And in thy seed shall what? All nations, All nations of the earth be. Blessed. Why? Because you have obeyed my command, my voice. In the mount of the Lord, it's, it's not just God providing the, the land. That's where many preachers have ended there. But it is also these other blessings that follow. Even the gates of your enemies on that mountain. So when I say let's go to the mount of the Lord, let's ascend the mount of the Lord, see what awaits us. Number three, uh, I will give you eight prophetic mountains in scripture. I have already done uh, uh, symbolism. Mount Ararat is one. Number two, Mount Moriah, we've covered that. Mount Sinai, 7,400, uh, uh, 7,497, whatever. Moses climbed Mount Sinai. In Mount Sinai, there was God's presence by fire, by thunder, by lightning, by earthquake. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So God's presence was there. When we climb the mountain, you will see the Lord. It was the place of the law. It was where the word was given. It was a place of worship. They worshipped. And we'll come to the other details of who was there worshipping. Remember when they were worshipping God, before they worshipped God, they worshipped a golden idol. And I will show you that even in church, even in this church, the devil comes in church. Are we together? When the sons of men were presenting themselves before God, Satan came among them and God asked Satan, Job 1 and Job 2, Satan, where have you been? He says, I've been walking to and fro, up and down. And God said, have you noticed my servant Job? So Satan comes to church. When Jesus was preaching, the demons would cry out even in church. The woman who was bended was in church and God, Jesus says, I be well, I cast that demon out. Are we together? Yeah. So even in church, the demons are there. Remember, Simon was in church. And in, in, in when, when Paul was praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, can we give you money so that I can also do that and fill people with the Holy Spirit? And Peter said, perish with your money. Who told you that the gift of God can be bought by money? Simony. So we are saying, we will look at that later on. Mount Carmel, Elijah, 1,885 feet high. It is a place of El Shaddai. God revealed himself as the only God on Mount Carmel. That's why he called fire from heaven. The prophets of Baal were worshipping the whole day, but fire did not come. The God who answers by fire came down. Are we together? It's a place of exalting God. It's a place where God was exalted. And it's also a place of death because the prophets of Baal were killed on that mountain. And after that victory, remember Elijah's life was in danger because the lady, what was her name? Jezebel said what? You kill my prophets, I will do what? I'll kill you. And Elijah runs away. It's a place where we see the true God, manifestation of the true God. Mount Zion, we already seen this. Let us go to Zion, the city of the Lord. On Mount Zion is a temple. David established the spiritual city on, in, in Jerusalem. There was worship. The tabernacle was built on Mount Zion. David did not build the tabernacle on Shiloh. He built it on Mount Zion, which Caleb said, give me my mountain. We will see that later on. Give me this mountain, which is Zion, the mount of God. It's a place of God's presence, worship. Mount Tabor, this is where Jesus prayed transfiguration. 
When Jesus was praying in the mount, he was praying, seeking God on that mountain. And there was Elijah and Moses who came to encourage him. It's a place of prayer. It's a place of empowerment. It's a place of hope. When we climb the mount of God, we will be praying. The disciples were sleeping. And even Peter came. Look, notice, I just said here, the devil is where even the presence of the Lord is. When Jesus is busy fellowshipping with Elijah and Moses, Peter and the disciples are asleep. When they wake up, instead of Peter asking what's the manner of this is, Jesus, let's build three booths. Let's build three tents here. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. Why? So that the presence of Elijah and Moses and Jesus may be there and they can be going and visiting. And that's exactly what's happening in every move of God. People build booths to try to contain the move of God. But it never works. And Jesus says, no, let's go and preach. Mount Calvary. In Latin, Mount Calvary is called what? Calvary. But in Greek, we call it Golgotha. So Calvary and Golgotha are the same mountain, one in Latin and one in Greek. Jesus was crucified on this mountain. It's the death, the place of death, but not just the death, death in the physical, but spiritually, it's a place of resurrection. It's a place of reconciliation where Jesus helps us to meet God and we meet God. The Mount of Golgotha is a place of atonement where Jesus pays the price for each and every one of us. It's a place of salvation. And lastly, I want to bring the Mount of Olives where Jesus traveled and told his disciples, pray, pray with me. They fell asleep. Pray again, they fell asleep. It's a place of prayer. It's a place where Jesus says, Father, if it is thy will, remove this cup of suffering. It's a place where you die in the flesh and you get alive in the spirit. And it's also on Mount Olives where Jesus would ascend. Amen. 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 Olives, olives is anointing. We get olive oil from anointing. It's that mountain that carries the anointing. It's that mountain that crushes the flesh. Anointing breaks the yoke. Breaks the yoke. Jesus was saying, God, I don't want to die. The mountain, the olives, the mount of anointing breaks all the yokes. And Jesus goes to death like a lamb to sacrifice. Amen. 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 Look at Psalms 24, verse 2 and 3, quickly. Psalms 24, verse 2 and 3. Remember this question and go with it. We have seen all these mountains, and this is an overview. We'll come to it again. Look at Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4. He says what? Let's start with verse 1 and 3, uh, verse 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Okay, verse 2. For he hath what? Founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Amen. Now, we have, told, we have been told about the earth and every uh, uh, geographical feature. Now, verse 3. Who shall do what? Ascend, Ascend into the mountain. Okay, it says hill, the King James, but should be the mountain of the Lord. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Remember I say it sometimes, scripture uses it interchangeably, hill and mountain. Now they are talking about people who can climb the mount of the Lord. Did Abraham climb with all his servants? No. No. Amen. That's very important. Did the animals climb the mount of the Lord? No. It was who? Abraham and yes. Isaac. Now he says, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall build an altar in his holy place? Then he says what? Verse 4. He that has what? Clean hands. Clean hands. Your hands are clean. You don't shed innocent blood. You don't steal from others. You are just a person. And he has what? A pure, a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall... See God, the attitude that was also preached on the mountain that is called the Mount 
sermons, the Beatitudes. And then he who has not lifted up what? His soul, His soul unto vanity. vanity. No sworn what? Deceitfully. Verse 5. He shall receive what? Blessing. The blessing of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation isn't that not a what abraham did he was pure hearted isaac was pure hearted he was about 27 years old or 30 years old thereabout he allowed himself to be sacrificed and to die and abraham obeyed god but because of their obedience and purity of heart they were blessed blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god in the mount of the Lord, you shall see God. But you cannot go into the mount of the Lord when you don't have a pure heart. When you have dirty hands. When you gossip and talk about people negatively. When you are so toxic, you will not be in the mount of the Lord. God help us. Amen. Amen. I want to finish with this. Say, letting go, letting go. and let God. In the mount of the law, like Abraham did, he was letting go of everything he had. This is the blessing. You know, each one of us has something that they hold so dear. This one thing, or these two things, or these three things. God had told Abraham, take thy son, thy only son, whom thou lovest. God, we saw that last Sunday. He's telling him to take the one he loves most. The one that came by miracle. The one that shook the whole universe. That Sarah got this child by a miracle. And remember my brother, my sister. Say with me, remember. 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 Say caution. caution. Say caution. caution. Hatari. Ilani. Caution. I'm saying this. Danger. When God promises you something. When God promises you something, when you are believing God for something, that is the avenue that the devil will come with to pay you a visit. God had promised Abraham a son, and the devil came through a child, through Hagar, Ishmael, because the devil now masqueraded as the one coming to help God. When God has promised you something, wait for God, not for anybody else. Amen. Amen. I don't care how good the deal sounds. If it's so good, hold, hold on. Go consult with God. Is this you or is this the devil masquerading as an angel of light? Because the devil uses himself. He comes as the angel of light like he did to Eve. And he says, did God tell you not to eat all the fruit? Look at this light guy. God had not said all the fruit. And the lady said, he should have said, get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But she says, no, God said we can eat everything except this one. Because, it, no, no, God, no, God knows when you eat it, you're not good and bad. Why do I want to know bad? Why do you say, what does gossip want you to know? The bad of somebody. Yes. You know how good Bishop is, but you want to hear, eh? what about him? Huh? What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit of the serpent. <laughs> Why do you want to know about the bad of something? If you hear there are some nudes of someone say, I want to see them and see if it is real. <laughs> nude is nude. Huh? He did that? Oh, really? I want to see. Why do you want to know the good and the bad? You know the good and the holy. Hallelujah. Amen. For only the pure hearted will see what? If you see them discussing, somebody say, uh -uh, I don't partake of that. Blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of scoffers. Amen. Amen. Jesus, look at Jesus, letting go and let God. Seven mountains in the life of Jesus. I'll finish with this. John chapter 2, verse 5, Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Jesus was tempted on the mountain. When he is filled with the Holy Spirit, he was taken to the mountains, the wilderness, where he was for 40 days and 40 nights. And John chapter 2, um, first John chapter 2, verse 15, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, 
the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The temptations Jesus got were three. The lust of the flesh turns stones into bread and eat. Are we together? The lust of the eyes. You see all these things, I will give them to you. And the pride of life. Throw yourself down and the angels will come and hold you. These are the three trinity, satanic trinity. This is a temptation the devil uses for all of us. The last of the eye, what you see, is so that the apple was good. The last, what you see, they want you to see. When you go to buy a car, they want you to see it. And then they tell you, take it on a test drive. I say, no, they say, you have to. So that you can feel the pride. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> They've already nailed you. <laughs> and the pride of life. They say, look at these advertisements. Ooh, look at the way you're going to look. One time I saw some jewelry on TV. It looked so good and I said, I'm going to buy it. And I bought it. The thing that I got was very different from what they advertised. <laughs> it was so flimsy and it was useless. I sent it back. I like to see and to touch what I'm buying. Jesus overcame those three. Then Mark chapter 3 verse 13 to 15. And he goeth into a mountain. Jesus went to the mountain to pray. To get before he started his ministry. He goes into a mountain and he called those whom he loved. What did he do? Matthew, Luke, Mark, Mark chapter 3 verse 13 and 15. And they call, he called them and ordained the twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them to preach and have power to heal sicknesses and cast out demons. Jesus went to the mountain before starting his uh, ministry with the disciples. And notice that all of these guys who were gotten in prayer, they all denied Jesus. And some betrayed Jesus and they left Jesus alone. Matthew chapter 15 verse 29 to 31. Miracles and healings were done on the mountains. Jesus, you can read all the miracles he did. Transfiguration, Matthew 17, verse 1. This is the mountain where Jesus was encouraged. He went to pray for power. Final discourse, Matthew chapter 24, the end times, the Olivet discourse. On the Mount of Olives where he prayed, he tells them what will come. The disciples came and said, tell us, when will these things happen? Verse 3. And he says, do not dismay. There will be rumors of war. Matthew 24, you can read on the Olivet Discourse. It's a place of revelation where God pours and reveals prophetically into your lives. Commissioning, Matthew 28, verse 16. Jesus is ascending to heaven on the same mountain. He says, now go ye into the whole world and do what? Preach. The mountain of ascension and glorification. Acts chapter 1. Verse 1 to 12. Jesus went to heaven on the mountain. Church, what is God saying? On the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, vision, and revelation. Today, if you tell people to pray to be on the mountain, they don't want to pray, and that's why we don't see God. Church, there is no Shortcut. We have to be a church that climbs the mountain of God. A church that worships God. A church that prays. Amen. 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 There's no spectating. There's no joyride. If you see God, you will know his children. You will see God. His children. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We worship you. You are Jehovah. You are Lord. Help us to climb your mountain and show us how to climb it. This year, we want to worship you. We want to be lost in the mount of God. Jesus, you spent your time on the mountains praying, seeking God, because you knew what that means.